Hello and welcome to Oversight. I am Charles Imuze. On today's episode of the program, we go to Ugbomosho in Oyo State to track some projects. But before we do that, this is what you should know about Oyo State. Oyo is located in the southwest geopolitical zone of Nigeria. Oyo State was one of the three states carved out of the former western state of Nigeria in 1976. Its capital is Ibadan, and it is the third most populous city in the country, informally the second most populous city in Africa. Oyo State shares borders with Ogun State in the south and Kwara State in the north, bordering Cameroon to the east. Oyo State has 33 local government areas, 29 local council development areas and three senatorial districts, namely Oyo North, Oyo South and Oyo Central. Oyo State has three senators and 14 members in the Federal House of Representatives. In 2021, Oyo State received a total sum of 1.88 billion naira from Zono Intervention Funds, known as Constituency Projects. We embark on a journey to Ajinapa, located about 30 kilometers from Ogbomosho. Ogbomosho is home to the popular Laduke Akintola University of Technology. Ajinapa is an agrarian community in Uriri local government area for your state with about 3,000 residents. It consists of villages like Oluke and Tewure. Ajinapa is part of Ogbomosho North, Ogbomosho South, and Uriri Federal Constituency and is represented by Honorable Ajao Adejumo in the Federal House of Representatives and Senator Abdul Fatai Buhari in the Senate. Ajinapa has one of the water scheme projects approved by the Federal Government in 2014 through the Ogun Oshun River Basin Development Authority. The project entailed the construction of a water dam for the community. Six years after, what has become of the Ajinapa water scheme? Is it serving the intended purpose? We visited Ajinapa to find out. They do it for community, for the benefit of community. Oloke here, Ajinapa, Tewuri, another village. So since we are, they were finished it, no water, no anything. The facility is deserted and not functional. The equipment are rusting away. The water reservoirs were empty and littered. No one was around. We were welcomed with loud sirens and birds chirping. <laughs> Oloki village is just a few hundred meters from the Ajinakba Dam. They lack access to potable water. The Ajinakba Dam has not served the people of Oloki despite its proximity. They resort to getting water from a well and from the look of it, it is highly unhygienic. 
From Uloki village, we proceeded to Ajinapa to speak with the community leader. David Areum is the Alajinapa of Ajinapa and he is unhappy with the state of the project. <laughs> The water pipes now serve as mere furniture and have been repurposed for other use. Ademuyua Adeyemi is the project tracking officer for budget in Oyo State. He tells us more about the project. When I saw the publication, it was um, 190 million for the completion of the work. I came to the site and I met the contractor. I do come often and often collect the data, the stage at which the work is going. And when it got to a certain, certain time, I asked him how far about the project. He said the project has been penned. And I asked him why. He said that that is where the fund reach. And from my, own, um, from my own research, I got to know that previous uh, funds has been releasing for this project before the year 2015, which it was actually 119 million. When a huge amount of money is being incurred on a good project like this, and at the end of the day, we cannot see the effect of it. It's, uh, it's very, 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 very bad to the community. The contractor for this project is Eurobell International Limited. The company drilled and expanded the Tewure River in the outskirts of Ajinapa. The water supply scheme, located about three kilometers from Ajinapa, was supposed to serve about 3,000 people in the community and our journey villages. But it never worked beyond the moment it was commissioned. We made an effort to reach the contractor using the listed address on the website of the Corporate Affairs Commission. There was a 196 million naira allocation in the 2015 budget for constituency project for the completion of the Ajinakba water scheme. This was facilitated by Honorable Mulikat Adeola. She represented Ajinakba till 2015 in the Federal House of Representatives. The Ogum Oshun River Basin Development Authority supervised the Ajinakba water scheme. This agency was indicted in the 2016 report by the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation for mismanagement of funds. The report alleges about 1.3 billion naira was mismanaged by the Ogun Oshun River Basin Development Authority. A representative of Paradigm Leadership Support Initiative shares some light on the background story to the Ajinapa Water Project. The Ajinapa Water Scheme. Um, in the work, I think he appeared uh, sometime in 2018 uh, when we were looking at some uh, projects that have been abandoned or poorly implemented you know, by federal agencies. And then we came across this uh, mini water scheme uh, having to be located in Oyo State. Uh, and then we began monitoring the project. What we uh, found out at the time was that uh, uh, 
uh, the project had initially been awarded in 2012. Uh, I think precisely October 5th, 2012, it was awarded for 449.7 million Naira uh, to a company. And during that process, uh, we, we realized that um, 449.1 million Naira was paid you know, to the contractor. Uh, and at the time when we came across you know, that uh, information, we also realized that I think about uh, more than 500,000 was being owed the contractor at the time. Uh, but there were you know, some things that happened in the process of executing that first phase of the contract. Uh, number one is that the bill of quantities uh, for that contract you know, was uh, consciously loaded you know, with unjustifiable uh, expenditure to the tune of more, uh, you know, more than four, 48 million naira. There was also uh, a provisional sum for contingency purposes uh, that amounted to more, uh, more than 20 million. Now, uh, what we then realized uh, was that in 2014, uh, there was also another award of contract on that same project, which was now tagged phase two of uh, Ajinapa uh, you know, water scheme. Uh, that project, you know, the second phase was now awarded for 249.3 million in 2014. But we then realized that there was a payment uh, to a contractor on that same project in October, I think precisely October 16, 2015, there was another payment of 187.7 million naira. So this is different from the 449.1 you know, million that was paid uh, you know, shortly after 2012. We now have another 187.7 million naira that is, you know, that was now paid again to another contractor uh, on a phase two, uh, supposedly phase two aspect of the project. But, you know, uh, I think uh, one of the issues that, you know, the auditors uh, from the Office of the Auditor General for the Federation flagged on that project, aside from the fact that, you know, there were conscious loading of the BOQ uh, to, 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 to the tune of more than 48 million, there was also a provisional sum of more than 20 million, which the auditors felt should have been used for this second phase of the project. After all, the first phase you know, appeared to, to, to have been completed. So if there were additional works that ought to have been done on the project, that provisional sum for contingency purposes for uh, which 20 million was allocated in the first phase of the project should have gone into this other you know, aspect, but you then realize that there was an entirely new award of contract, you know, tag phase two of Ajinapa, you know, uh, water scheme. Between 2012 and this 2015 that we are talking about, Honorable Mulikat Akonde was at the center of the project. But you know, um, you know, legislators always have this idea that they only, you know, nominate projects and they are not at the center of execution. And our own you know, uh, question had always been at PLSR is that you can't tell us that you are not at the center of execution. While we are calling for CISUS to monitor implementation of government projects, they will monitor the implementation of government projects through their elected representatives. Uh, when they visited that uh, project, you know, the communities then you know, fed them back, saying that the only time water came out from that water scheme was the day it was launched. Uh, there was a, a, you know, a, a, an alternative power you know, supply uh, equipment in generator that was provided there, but none has been to the service of the community. And if you go there today, I don't think the story has, has changed for you know, uh, residents of uh, Ajinapa, which is in Oriole local government. Since 2018, we have been following up more than 16 or 17 projects that were handled by Mosho River Basin Development Authority, as well as Lua Niger River Basin Development Authority. And uh, we, we had written to them to you know, provide us with certain information, which you know, they, didn't, they, didn't, uh, you know, they didn't oblige us with. Uh, but 
uh, what we what we did was to then engage anti-corruption agency uh, to follow up uh, all of these issues that we highlighted with uh, Oboshori Babi's investment authority. And we are still on it. A couple of those issues have been resolved, but for those that have not been resolved and haven't been closed out, we're still on it. And we will get to the bottom of these issues. Potable water supply is not the only challenge faced by Ajinapa community. Accessible road network also adds to that list. The Ajinapa Tewure Road links both communities and is important to aid the movement of goods and services within both communities. <laughs> From Ajinakpa in your state, we revisit a project in Cross River State, the Akangpa Civic Center project that was never built. We have been provided an update that the project was executed but domiciled in a different location. We were able to speak to Senator Gashon Basi, and this is what he told us. Constituency projects are one of the um, uh, key tools that the federal government, the executive, uses to reach the people. And I think it's an essential part of budgeting. If left to me, I would have even say, said that they should increase the amounts that are used for constituency projects because they really do hit home. Um, and we are, um, uh, even though we represent our people, we are the link between the federal government and the people on the ground. And so passing these projects through us or making us nominate these projects creates a massive impact for the federal government. The important thing about constituency projects is that once you put the uh, funds into the budget, the responsibility of the legislature ends, of the, or the sorry, of the lawmaker ends. Um, it now becomes an executive responsibility because it is the executive that is responsible for going through the proper due process, for awarding the contracts to the contractors that win, and so on and so forth. So the responsibility of us in the, in the um, uh, we the lawmakers, is merely to identify projects that you feel are important to your constituency. And you'll know that for most constituencies in this country, the only way in which they feel the federal government's presence is through constituency projects. And so we decided to build them a, um, a uh, town hall, which we delivered. No, from uh, the constituency funds, the constituency project funds. We built them a town hall. You can easily track uh, items on the national budget. And the constituency projects are part of the national uh, budget. Person, all your reporter should have done was to go and see the paramount or the, um, the chief there. And the chief would have taken him to the location of the project. The project is actually very visible. As you enter our ban, you will see the project. It's not a hidden project. So I think that uh, I want to task, not just, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to pick on channels. But I want to task journalists to be very thorough when they're doing their investigations. So I don't know why the senators are being chased, but definitely senators are not responsible for executing those projects. That's number one. Two, we know that not just for constituency projects, projects in general, you've talked about 56 or whatever it is, thousand, projects in general suffer from or have suffered in the past from the budget cycle, uh, the funding of the federal budget. I think last year was the first time that we had a 100% release on the federal budget. So clearly we have been having 60%, uh, 50%, whatever it is, percentage release on the federal budget. And of course, if there's no funding, the projects have to stop. Uh, they will be abandoned. And when you come back the next year, you probably don't even roll over that project. You come with new projects. So there's been an issue of budgeting. And that, to my mind, is what has been largely responsible for the, um, for the abandoning projects. I mean, there are other uh, issues, but I think the key issue is budgeting. Normally, when you, do, when you put a constituency project in the, in the budget, you expect that you put in all the funds for that. And that's why you find that constituency projects are not big things. They are small things. So you, if, you're, if you're building a town hall, for instance, it's something that can be finished within that budget cycle. And so that's what really happens most of. And so uh, if you're talking about the constituency projects, I'm not sure that the, the, um, the turnover, turnover in senators and House of Reps members 
really impacts too much. It does have an impact sometimes, but it doesn't impact too much on constituency projects. I, for instance, will not put a, 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 a project into the budget that I cannot fund or the budget cannot fund in a budget year. So I, I, that's what most people do. Um, like I said, that's not the key issue. The key issue is the funding for the national budget. That's the key issue. You have a four-year mandate. You are a senator until the last day of your mandate. So why would you not to do, want to do things for your people? It doesn't make, uh, to me, it doesn't make sense. You have to continue working for your people until the last day. And if working for your people means locating projects in, um, the, in your constituencies, in the villages, in the local governments, in the wards, and so on, then you must do that until the last day. The Akangpa project highlights one of the key challenges faced when tracking constituency project, which is the vague description of project locations. Gabriel Okewo, the chief executive of South Budget, tells us more about this. One of the aim of the oversight program, as I believe, is not for us to showcase problems in project implementation and leave the problem as problem. Right. One of the objectives of this program is for us to see issues around uh, implementation of projects and then when we bring them up, uh, show them in the hair, we are able to see situations where contractors go back to site or we have uh, government officials or government agencies coming back to, to clarify and, and educate us perhaps uh, we are not so clear in our claim or in our, in our tracking. Uh, which in this case is what I've seen the distinguished uh, senator trying to do. So I will first of all want to take it as a success story first to say uh, we went after tracking a project and uh, our, our, our result of that tracking says that the project was not implemented, but we have uh, the respective senator that is able to call our attention to say, no, uh, that is not the case. The project is actually implemented, uh, however, not in the community you went to look for the project, but in another community. So for us and for me, I really think that is first a success story. Right, and then now going back to the project itself, uh, the tracking of the project uh, starts from how well, how detailed, how 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 clear uh, the project details are well written in the approved budget documents. I mean, uh, the Appropriation Act is a public document that anyone in a, in a democratic setting, anyone should be able to go to the office uh, or to the website of the Budget Office of the Federation, download the budget documents, see any project that interests them or that is in their, in their local community, and then uh, be willing to track if they want to track. Right? And then when they want to track, the project uh, details should be clear enough that uh, once it is picked, uh, irrespective of uh, who uh, that person is, the detail of the project is clear enough, can lead the person that is interested in tracking that project to exactly where the project is situated. So the case we have in, at hand is a case of uh, a non specified project location. So according to the project description on the approved budget document says construction of town hall in a campan community, right? Is there a community like that? Yes. Is a project situated in a community like that? No, by our monitoring. However, when we brought this out, the distinguished senator that nominated the project was able to call our attention and said, no, the project was actually nominated, but you didn't do your job well, which we accepted. And I'm happy that we've now gone to the field to go and see the project. We are happy that the project, yes, we could see that the project has been implemented. However, uh, we were also able to see that unlike what was written in the approved budget document that said a camp Palm community, what we now found in the project signboard or where the project was eventually uh, built is urban a campan. So it's just like if I, if, I mean, we are in Lagos, if I use Lagos as an example, if I tell you a project will be done in Ifako, right? By your sense, Ifako is around Bagada. But Ifako in Bagada is different from Ifako Ijayi, that is in Ogba. Do you get? So when there is no clarity 
and specificity in terms of location of projects, this situation is bound to happen. And I bet to say that this is not the, the first one. These are issues that we have been clamoring about, we have been talking about. In, in the Zona Intervention Project uh, in, in, in 2020, there are about projects that we could not specify, that we could not get exactly location of where they are going to be implemented, amounted to about uh, 2.1 billion era in the 2020 budget. In the 2021 uh, approved budget, projects that lack specific location, that if interested parties like us that want to track the project, we cannot really say where these projects are going to be implemented for us to be able to track them. In our, by our calculation, amounted to about 1.5 billion naira, right? So this case at hand is a, is a case of a project that was nominated for the good people of a community, but lacks a clear detail of exactly where it is going to be nominated. According to the website of the Budget Office of the Federation, the Civic Centre project was described as follows. 2019 ZIP 702 Construction of Town Hall at Akankba in Cross River State Sanitary District, Cross River State Amount 31 million naira. Well, this is the much we can take on today's episode of the program. Remember, the journey to transparency and accountability is still far ahead. We ask that you play your part, get involved, and ask questions. Till I come your way again, I'm Charles Imuze. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.